So awesome. Thank you. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. It's fun to talk baseball in November. I know a lot going on, so I appreciate you being here. Uh, quick update on where we're at. We just finished our fall team segment. Went well. Uh, really feel good about where we're at. Got a long way to go, but we're going the right direction. So, um, you know, it's overwhelming. You think of a team at the beginning of the fall and where you need to be in May. And if you take it day by day, it's a lot easier. So we've kind of had that mindset daily and it's I think it's helped. We're, we're in a good spot, like I said, a long way to go, but um, it's been great. Guys are awesome and we're having a lot of fun. Recruiting class, really, really fired up about the class we put together. Total team effort. If I if I had to list everyone involved in the recruitment of these guys, that we'd be here a really long time. So, and I'd leave someone out. So I'm not going to do that. But really, there's so many people on this campus. You know, from the top uh, administration, you think of academics, strength and conditioning, uh, other coaches. I mean, it is a it is a incredible team effort and uh, just an awesome. It was another reinforcer of how awesome. The University of Kansas is and, and what this place is like and um, really proud to be a part of it. Really, really proud and impressed with my staff. Uh, those guys killed it. And Brandon Scott is an elite recruiter. He's a great pitching coach, but an elite recruiter. Did a fantastic job. Tyler Hancock, again, both those guys were recruiting coordinators at their previous stops. And then John Coyne to coordinate the recruiting of, of you know, having three former recruiting coordinators on your staff that you're coordinating the effort for. John is as elite as they get. So um, super proud of what they did. They they get all the credit for this class and, and truly wonderful, wonderful coaches, wonderful men. They did a heck of a job. Jump into the class, 13 players, five high school players, eight junior college players. We were really intentional about trying to address some immediate needs and then trying to stay in the middle of the field. Uh, you know, the good news about bringing in 18 players this past summer as we were able to get things in a good spot right away. The bad news with that is some of those guys are, you know, here for a year and graduating or, or onto the draft. So we had a lot of things we needed to address. The five high school players, Brady Blake from Indianola, Iowa, Indianola High School. Uh, you probably remember his uncle Casey who played in the big leagues with the Twins in, in Cleveland and uh, the Dodgers. Um, Brady's Dad Joe, fantastic athlete, so comes from a great lineage. He's a great player. He's a left side infielder, can stay at short, has enough arm to, to go to third, and certainly athletic to play all over the field. Kind of a special one. His grandpa was a, a mentor of mine for a really long time and made a huge impact on me as a coach. Um, so we're really fired up about Brady. We, we feel like he's an infielder that can come in and contribute right away. Cooper Moore from Bixby, Oklahoma. He's a two way guy, he's a catcher pitcher which is an interesting combination. But uh, as you can guess with catcher pitcher, you know, he's got a huge arm, big catch and throw guy, uh, really like his bat, his hit at every level. Uh, is one of only a few guys in, in Bixby High School history to have 50 hits in a season, which Bixby's a, a great baseball program and, and a really high profile guy. So we're really happy with Cooper. We think he's got a chance to do it on both sides of the ball for us. Dominic Bagley from Columbus High School in Columbia, Illinois, down kind of the part of the country where Coach Scott came from. Super projectable righty, uh, you know, strikeout machine. He, he punched out 138 guys in 86 innings last year. It's high school baseball, but I don't care what level of baseball you're playing, that, that's, a, that's a lot of strikeouts. So uh, multi-sport athlete. Really bouncy. He is a, a really, really good kid and, and uh, one we're really excited about. Has a chance as a freshman to compete for a weekend job. So we think we got a future starter there. Uh, Colton Wemhoff from Rockhurst High School, uh, Gladstone, Missouri. Uh, Colt can really, really hit. And he was uh, someone that had committed to Coach Price. And we went out and watched him right away. And this kid hit all summer. Every time we went and watched him. It was double home run, double home run. So we really like him, really athletic, 6'2", 200 pounds, big physical kid. Uh, he, he definitely looks like a Division One baseball player and plays like one too. So really excited about him. Um, and then another, another player that uh, Coach Price had committed as well, Ty Wisdom. And it's funny, Skip told me when we talked right after getting the job, we went over a bunch of things and he said, hey, you need to, whatever you do, you need to keep Ty Wisdom, he can really hit. So. We went out and watched him and, and uh, left-handed hitter, 
middle infielder, can, can play second, third, uh, can also play the outfield, but very, very good athlete, um, has all the accolades and, and uh, fantastic kids. So those are our five high school kids, super fired up about them. We knew we had to address the junior college thing uh, and, and had to, I think part of the key in college baseball right now is being old. And, uh, you know, when you go into the portal and, and you get a guy like Cole Elvis, our catcher, you know, he's he's gone next year. He's, he'll be done with his eligibility. So you have guys like that that are here for a year and gone. So we needed to stay old. And uh, we were able to do that with some more JUCO guys. And, and uh, really, again, proud of the job my staff did with these guys. Devin Bennett, right-handed pitcher from McLennan Community College, plays for Tyler Johnson and McLennan. Won a national championship two years ago. Devin is a big time winner. Kind of a fun one for me. I had uh, committed him at Dallas Baptist years ago and he ended up in junior college. So the chance to recruit him again was, was really fun. He's a fantastic kid and a, a special talent. Um, and again, a winner coming from a winning junior college program, uh, won a national championship and, or, and, and will certainly be threatening for one uh, this year as well. Caden Collins from Scottsdale Community College. He was at Yavapai last year and has played for three really, really elite Hall of Fame coaches. Ryan Kugel, who's now at Iowa Western, was at Yavapai. Alex Cherney, who I've known forever at Scottsdale. And then Jerry Dawson is, uh, Jerry Dawson is a first ballot Hall of Famer at every level of, of coaching and a guy that, that we've gotten guys from in the past. And all three of those guys, um, think that Caden is really special and when we went and watched him pitch you can tell why he's electric stuff uh, can really really throw a change up and a uh, big time competitor and, and, and going to be a big piece to it really really good athlete Cooper Combs from right down the street of Johnson County plays for Eric Horner uh, Springdale Arkansas kid he was the first, one of the first guys we jumped on in, in this year's class really bouncy athlete center fielder can play all three outfield positions can really hit put up big numbers at Johnson County and uh, you know we felt really good we felt like we got the best hitter in the state in, in Cooper Combs he is a really really good athlete in a motor like this guy can really really move so we're thrilled about him All-American last year in junior college and and uh, put up big numbers including 14 home runs so and, and still 20 bases too he's a he's a really nice player Chase Diggins from Odessa Junior College plays for Curtis Lay uh, Chase is from Perth, Australia, and actually went to high school in Japan, so um, kind of a different path to Lawrence, Kansas, but uh, a, a, a true defender at short. Like, we feel he's the best shortstop in junior college baseball, and I don't think we're alone in, in feeling that. Uh, offensive player, bunch of doubles, stole 19 bases, uh, eight triples, you know, and, and eight, eight triples to me, you look at extra base hits, eight triples is a lot of doubles that you're running really fast on, you know? And if you look at a stat line, that, that's a guy that can really run. So big time defender, um, will stay at short for the rest of his career. He'll play in pro ball for a really long time at short. And a neat kid, really neat kid. And, and uh, <coughs> Coach Coyne was trying to do Zoom calls with you know his family in Japan. So John really did it all with, with Chase, really proud of him. Ben Hartle, catcher from Heartland Community College, plays for Chris Razzo. Uh, we needed a catcher with Cole Elvis leaving this year. Catching was a big piece of the puzzle for what we were looking for. Uh, ben checked every box, big time offensive player and a really good catch and throw guy. And we knew he was good when, when we committed him and then a bunch of scouts called us. So, uh, you know, he's a guy on a lot of people's radar, but a really, really awesome catcher, right-handed hitter uh, and in a, you know, you talk about, we talk to our guys all the time about winning the strike zone. Like the game of baseball is won in the strike zone. Whoever wins the strike zone every night usually wins. And when you look at Ben, he's a great pitch stealer as a catcher. And as a hitter, he's just incredible strike zone awareness. So not afraid to take his walks and not afraid to get extra base hits either. Evan Shaw from Co Cochise Junior College plays for Todd Englehart, uh, who might be one of the best coaches in, at any level of, of baseball. He is a tremendous coach and a guy I've had a relationship with for a long time. Evan's actually from Fridley, Minnesota, which is right down the street from where I grew up, and is one of the truly is one of the greatest pitchers to ever uh, come through the state of Minnesota. He was 32 and eight in high school, uh, and then you know ended up somehow down in Cochise, which is 
in Douglas, Arizona, which is about uh, pitching wedge away from the border. And he is having a heck of a junior college career and a guy that we feel can jump in and compete for a starting job right away. He's left-handed, which you know is always good, but a guy that we're super excited about. And, and again, a guy that's always won at every level. A couple more, Patrick Stites, uh from Central Arizona College, plays for Anthony Gillich, won a national championship last year. Uh, might confuse him for one of Coach Self's guys if he's walking around, he's 6'8", 210, and a really, really physical athlete. Bunch of strikeouts, and uh, a really durable, you know, you think about professional baseball and what they look for, like Patrick is kind of it. Big physical body works, arm works, strike thrower, and uh, we had to we had to work hard on all these guys, but Patrick was a guy that we were um, really, really like the rest of these guys, but really excited to get, and a guy that was really intentional about where he was going, asked great questions, really thoughtful kid, was really impressed with he and his family. And then Isaac Tiger, final one from uh, Butler Community College, plays for BJ McVeigh. We feel like we got the best pitcher in the state too. So Combs the best hitter and, and Tiger the best pitcher. Uh, 94 strikeouts and 77 innings last year. Uh, went nine and three and, and had all 14 of his starts. So one of the things that we look at a lot is just that durability piece. And, and you, know, you think about if, if your starters, in a perfect world, we have four starters this year that all log 100 innings. And then you know the bullpen piece becomes a little bit more fun to play with. So with all these guys that we project as starters, big, durable, physical guys that have proven it uh, at a really high level. So really excited about the class and uh, yeah, happy to answer any questions about anything. I guess I'm just curious, do you feel like you would have the same success at the junior college ranks in this recruiting class if you didn't have your own experience at that level in coaching? I don't know, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think I think anyone that spent time in junior college and coached at that level or played at that level knows that it takes uh, your blood changes a little bit when you play in junior college and when you coach at that level because it's just it's just different. And uh, so yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 find myself uh, gravitating towards winning programs in junior college. So I don't know. That's that's a great question. How important is like the Kansas City area, whether you're talking just JUCOs that you're familiar with or high school kids over there? I mean, do you put a premium on that? Maybe just starting there and building out, or is it is there any kind of plan there? Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, in, in an ideal world, we find all the best players in the country really sure. close. And, and, you know, <clears throat> sometimes that's true and sometimes it's not. And, you know, I think the portals changed that, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, this summer was kind of a sprint to put a team together so that was kind of all over the place but if you really look at how we went about it we started kind of from the inside out and okay what what's in our pocket in the midwest and how do we grow it from there there's a there's a simplicity to that style of recruiting that we really like and that we we try to do um ultimately you know the best player in a position wants to be a jayhawk and he's from you know montana we're gonna go get him but but yes in an ideal world and in we're, we're thankful that we're in a talent-rich place. And uh, so, yeah, and we, we were really intentional about that last summer with the high school stuff we were watching, and, and we saw every junior college you could think of in the Midwest multiple times this fall. You, you said your fall went pretty well. Um, but how, how far along are you in things like establishing your culture? And I mean, it's gonna be a pretty pretty new look team, it seems like, right? So, yeah. Um, how, how far along are you there, and, and what is what is sort of at the top of that list of what your culture is and what these guys have maybe embraced already? Yeah. We've talked about it a lot as a team. It's new for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've worked with a couple of the guys on my staff, but it, it's new for them. Uh, it's new for the, the returners. It's new for the transfers. It's new for the new high school recruits. It's, uh, you know, I haven't been a head coach in 10 years, so it's a lot of new things for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's been fun, and and I think we're, I think we're where we're supposed to be. It's been hard, you know. We talked about it in our first meeting. I said this is not, this is not what we're engulfing on is not easy. Like we are trying to do something that, uh, you know, hasn't been done here in a long time, and and the way we go about that and how we do it, like it's it's going to be hard. And I asked him the other day. I said, hey, 
raise your hand if you were expecting to have no adversity this year. You know, they all chuckle. It's like, it's coming. And if it's not, the adversity is not on you now, it's, it's the next wave. So, you know, culturally, I think um, it'd be a great question for the players. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I like where it's at. And uh, I think the trust is there. And I think guys are, you know, if you watch the practice now compared to six weeks ago, uh, first few weeks, it's, you know, no laughter, no talking, you know, everyone's a little bit on pins and needles. And, and now you come out to baseball practice and it, it feels like you're at a baseball practice and as it should. So I think we're in a good spot. We got a long way to go, but, uh, unbelievable kids. We have fantastic student athletes and, uh, I've been super impressed with, with their buy-in. And, and, uh, I think a lot of that has to do with my staff and what an awesome job they've done. We didn't get a chance to talk to you either about the other signing group that you announced and, and brought in, and a handful. I don't remember the number, but two, three, four guys from LSU, right? Two. Yep. Two. Okay. Yep. Uh, how important were those guys? How automatic was that, maybe even for you, with that past relationship? And, and how, how important? Not as is automatic that? as I would have liked. They made me watch them multiple times this summer, but no, uh, it was great. I think they've been. Uh, they're two wonderful human beings, Collier Cranford and Luke Leto. They're they're fantastic men, and they're workers, and they're great teammates. And I'm really proud of them. They've come in from day one, and and uh, they've just played really hard. They're they're uh, they're a great example of what it looks like to work at it. Uh, they're humble. They're great teammates. So for me, uh, it, it's you know it's funny. I, I I told the guys I said, hey, it's we're about it's about if we look at what's new for everyone, like the three of us have at least done this recently, you know, so there's some familiarity and some, some comfort probably for them. I know there is for me, but yeah, I'm super glad they're here. They're wonderful young men and really awesome that they're here. Do you think future classes will lean heavy in junior college like this one does, or as the needs change, what you do with each class will change? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I think that any time I've ever tried to put recruiting in a box, the you know, the landscape's changed, you know? And uh, I remember during COVID, I did this long, exhaustive, you know, out on my back step every day, long recruiting study and, and came up with some really cool stuff, but then the transfer portal hit and it's like, okay, well, <laughs> new box. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I think we'll always go back to best available. And I think there are times when you, uh, a high school player can jump in and, and, either impact right away or they have a really clear picture of it's a longer runway to development. Uh, and sometimes, you know, get a JUCO kid that's just been microwaved a little faster. And so I don't know, that's a great question and I don't, I don't mean to be vague in the response, but um, we'll always try to find the best player. And then the other thing is, you know, we deal with, we have a weird sport. You get drafted after your junior year. Uh, the draft is in July. So you have no way of knowing, they don't declare. Uh, and so trying to anticipate you know, what do we do in terms of this position? I, I would love to know what some of our guys, whether or not they're gonna sign this year, would impact what we do moving forward. So you, you give your best guess, and that best piece of the high school kid, you do it. If it's the best guy's a Juco guy, you do it. Does kind of the draft aspect of it and how, you know, in baseball more than some of those other sports, you're seeing guys get drafted from Juco, does that make that a more, um, I guess, desirable way to get players in the world of baseball since you do have them a lot, a lot of times end up being guys that, you know, are moving on to the pros and whatnot. And clearly there's a lot of talent there. Yeah, I, I think that, I think the statistical analysis of a junior college player is easier. Uh, you know, they've got 56 regular season games, uh, you know, sometimes over the course of two or three seasons, depending on when they were, you know, whether or not they were impacted by COVID. So I think the statistical analysis is a little easier on a, on a JUCO kid. Uh, you know, if someone, I think, for example, if someone says someone has power and they have two home runs in high school, you might have a guy that has power and hits two home runs, you know, plays on a monster field and they play 17 high school games, uh, in junior college, if they play 56 games and someone says he has power and he has two home runs, you know, he does not have power. So, you know, I think some of those things are easier to evaluate and there's, there's, uh, uh, <clears throat> 
yeah, it's it, it's all about the pocket and what the need is at, at that moment. You know, to, if, if a guy's big time defensive and plays shortstop, he could be 12 years old and we take him. If uh, if it's a corner outfielder who's going to be a DH type deal, it's like, well, you know, that's a there are, there are more of those guys available. And you get two guys who are committed to Coach Price. How is it trying to? Three, three. Cooper Moore, too. I forgot to mention Cooper. Okay, so three. Uh, how is it trying to resell them on a program <clears throat> that they committed to with a different coaching staff? Yeah. Well, I think uh, we all know this, but Coach Price is a great man. And Coach Price is a Jayhawk through and through. And I think when he recruited those guys, I think he did a phenomenal job, as he did with all these guys, of, of selling our greatest attribute, our, our greatest product, and that's the University of Kansas. So I, I think it was more of a uh, get in front of them and 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 just recommit, hey, hey, here's where we're going, and here's here's where we see you in the process. But those guys were Jayhawks from from day one. So I was actually, their families were awesome. The kids were awesome. They were excited. But I think a lot of that has to do with Skip. Skip was a, um, and still is a, a, a great advocate for the University of Kansas, and uh, you know was super helpful in the transition too. Of, hey, here's here are these guys, and blah blah blah. And so yeah, it wasn't. It was. Uh, we probably felt some pressure to to make sure we kept those guys, but Coach Price had done such a great job of selling them on this place that it was, it was fun. Uh, speaking of community college on this year's recruiting staff, there was a lot of community college pitchers. What do you have to say about the difference between those guys that have more mileage and more experience on the bump compared to more raw high school talent? Yeah. You know, the game's really hard to play without pitching. It's miserable to play without pitching. <laughs> and uh, so I think some of the right now, you know, you, you look at, at some of our guys right now, Sam Ireland, I was in the rotation in Minnesota for three years. Colin Baumgartner has been in the rotation for uh, four years at SIU Edwardsville. So there's something comforting about that of knowing that those guys have done it. Uh, and then there's also guys like, you know, we have you know, Carter Muck, who is a freshman, and if we watch them throw right now, everyone in this room would say that's different. Like it's electric. So, you know, Who's going to be more consistent over 20 batters in a game right now? Well, Sam Ireland. If we can get Muck, you know, uh, focused down into a scope, he's going to be special. So uh, I think it's you have to be really good at recruiting. You have to be really good at development. And they're they're one A and one B. It's not just all recruiting. It's not just all development. So I think you have to do both. You have to get really good high school players that are projectable, and you got to work your tail off with them, which is what Coach Scott has done. He's done a tremendous job with the pitchers. Coach Hancock's done a great job with the hitters. Uh, but then there is a little bit of that, you know, slow and steady wins the race. And when you have a, a guy like, if you guys watch Baumgartner in Ireland throw right now, you would say, well, that that's that's what it should look like. Those are two durable, physical weekend arms. On the other end of the battery, you have Cole Elvis joining Jake English this year, who's returning. Yeah. Um, what do you have to say about those two guys behind the plate and, and how confident you are in the battery going into this year? No, I couldn't. Our, the first day we threw bullpens, I walked away and I, I, I kind of had to check myself with my assistants. I said, we have two unbelievable defensive catchers. We were throwing bullpens in our, uh, you know, just the side bullpen down the line, and they blocked every pitch. They caught every pitch of the bullpen. Uh, you know, and sometimes there's a fight with catchers to have to catch bullpens. You know, they like catching the game, but when it comes to catching the guy who's working on a split finger fastball, uh, they say no thank you, as they as they probably should. And uh, those two are really, really impressive. They can both block. They can both throw. They're very different in their leadership styles, but they're both great leaders. Uh, I've been so impressed with Jake English as a human being and his poise. Uh, he's really calm. Uh, Cole Elvis is as good a leader as I've ever coached. Uh, so we feel like we have two really uh, awesome options back there, and, and we've we've messed with both of them at first base. And then, you know, the DH thing's a little scary with those guys because, uh, you know, if one of them were to get a foul tip, now you're putting a DH in the catch, and now a pitcher has to hit, which I'm sure our pitchers would love. But... That's not going to happen. So um, they've both been playing some first base and doing a really good job. But yeah, they're they're both awesome. Both guys are going to catch the pro ball for a long time. Um, one more. Uh, KU historically has done like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday pitching rotation. 
How does that compare to experience you have at DBU and LSU, and what's your plan for managing the, the staff and rotation as a whole this year? Yeah, I'd throw Tuesday in there too. In a perfect world, you've got four guys that you roll out in order every week. Um, that's the plan, uh, and that, that, I think that's the plan for for pretty much everyone. I think the evolution of an opener in, in professional baseball has changed the way that uh, we all coach, and, and, and there are some real benefits. And at the big league level, uh, it works, and you see guys do it all the time, and they do it in the playoffs. And, and uh, so I'm sure we'll run into some of that. And, and sometimes it's a safer bet of, okay, to start a game, a freshman gets, you know, he gets his 30 minutes to throw, he kind of can ramp up into it. It's a, it's a little different adrenaline hit when, uh, you know, it's runners on first and second, and the coach looks at you and says, you have uh, 37 seconds to get hot, you know? So that's where uh, I think sometimes being able to open, that, that's where you use an opener. But yeah, ideal world, we've got four guys, you know, we've told four guys in, in exit meetings from the fall, like, hey, you, your goal should be 100 innings, and if you four each throw 100 innings, we're gonna be really special. Uh, now that's a tall task, that would be a monumental deal, but that's how we're training, uh, you know, Luke Bradford uh, is as good as any strength coach in the country. He is absolutely fantastic in the way he's moving these guys around. Uh, he's definitely building them for durability. So that's the plan. Anything else for Coach? 